always been known for its railroads, but it's far more than just that. It also got its start as a port city on the James River. Behind me is a structure known as Intermediate Terminal Warehouse Number 3. And as its name suggests, it is third in a line of intermediate terminal warehouses and is one of the few remaining remnants of Richmond's industrious port city past. But where are the other two intermediate terminal warehouses? And what exactly is an intermediate terminal warehouse? In the 1930s, the United States would find itself in its most severe economic drought that the country had ever seen, the Great Depression. In the 1930s, then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the New Deal, a series of public works projects with the express purpose of employing people once again and getting the economy jump-started. This is where Intermediate Terminal Warehouse Number 3 will receive its funding in 1937. Construction of the warehouse would be helmed by the Blackwell Engineering and Construction Company and completed on May 23, 1938. This warehouse was mainly used to store sugar from Cuba, but it also held sand, gravel, newsprint, oil, gas, peanuts, and tobacco. In 1939 alone, 1.5 million tons of sugar came through this warehouse on its way to tobacco products or to the Hershey Chocolate Factory in Hershey, Pennsylvania. The first two intermediate terminal warehouses would face many problems that the third would see rectified. You see, these buildings were constructed to hold goods while they were waiting to be transferred from ships to trains. However, the warehouses were built too close to the James River, and when it rains, the James River likes to flood. Tons of products would be destroyed in these floods. Not only was Terminal Warehouse 3 built onto a hill, it was also built on these concrete pillars well above the ground. In this image, you can see how effective this strategy was. Now this strategy worked very well to keep the products inside Intermediate Terminal Warehouse Number 3 safe from water damage. But it also allowed for roads to be built underneath it. Now there used to be a bridge that connected with Intermediate Terminal Warehouse Number 3 to the second one. However, in 2007, this bridge was removed and the first two terminal warehouses were demolished. There are some people in Richmond trying to preserve this as a historical site. However, it has been deemed ineligible for preservation and has been said to be demolished. Behind me is another remnant of Richmond's industrious past the Fulton Gas Works. On November 29, 1848, Richmond passed an ordinance that created the Committee on Light, a group of people tasked with creating works that would convert coal into gas energy. In 1851, this area here began its development, with the Fulton Gas Works itself beginning its construction in 1853. It would finish its construction on October 5th 1856 and would also begin operations on that same day. The massive structure there is called a gasometer. It was used to hold the gas until it was needed for distribution to the city. A byproduct of this coal to gas conversion was tar, which was repurposed as a sealant for ships. The gas works was in operation until 1950. Since then it has sat here abandoned. It has also been decided that the gas works will not be preserved and is scheduled to be demolished. Which was dedicated to creating works coal into gas energy. I'm gonna wait for all these cars.